This is Chapter 5, Dimensional Analysis and Similarity, Part 6. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the theory of models and something called scale-up. So what we're doing is we're taking data, usually from small-scale models in wind tunnels and water tunnels, and using that data to predict something about the full-scale system. So we'll go through the theory of the scale up of data from models and then I'll end with a numerical example of predicting the forces on a billboard sign using measurements made on a small scale model in a water tunnel. Physical models which are usually smaller than the full scale prototype are very commonly used in fluid mechanics testing and so we're going to go through the, the theory of models taking data from a, usually a small-scale model and scaling it up to predict something about the, the full-scale prototype. Now the word model is used a lot in engineering. Often we use the word model to refer to a mathematical model, but that's not the case here. So I want to be perfectly clear on this, that for the purpose of discussing similarity, when I use the word model, I'm referring to a physical scaled model that's used to predict the behavior of the full-scale system. I want to use the word prototype. I'm referring to the full-scale system for which we're trying to make predictions. And over on the right here, for example, I've shown a tall building, an actual tall building that would be much too large to fit in a wind tunnel. And so we construct a, a, a scaled model that would go in the wind tunnel. Similarly, we could put a a model of an aircraft in a wind tunnel for wind tunnel testing and that would simulate the forces and lift on the full-scale aircraft which we're going to call the prototype. A little bit of nomenclature here for variables that don't have subscripts those variables are associated with the prototype and variables that have the subscript M are associated with the the model the scaled model. In a previous video we showed that for any given problem uh, using dimensional analysis we can describe that problem in terms of a set of pi dimensionless terms and remember that we you know, we would express this relationship as pi 1 equals some function of pi 2 pi 3 up to say pi k as you've seen from the previous videos, some problems have more dimensionless parameters than others. The important point is the same relationship can be written for the scaled model. So we can write exactly the same relationship. Pi 1 for the model is some function of pi 2 for the model, pi 3 for the model, up to pi k for the model, where m here is the subscript that refers to the model. The important point here is that this unknown function here, which we have to determine uh, using some other technique like experiments, will be exactly the same for the model and the prototype. And that's really the, the underlying assumption in using a model and scaling up that data to predict uh, what's going to happen with the full-scale prototype. Oh, I also want to remind you that Remember that one of the rules when we constructed these pi parameters was that pi 1 here contains the thing you're after. Might be in this case, if we have a, a building at some velocity, uh, we might be looking at the drag on the building. So the drag, the drag force then would be contained in, in this pi 1 parameter. So it contains the dependent variable, uh, the variable to be predicted. So for similarity, you, you design a scaled model and operate that model at conditions such that you have exactly the same pi parameters. So for example, this uh, aircraft here in the wind tunnel, you'd set pi 2 for the full-scale aircraft equal to pi 2 for the model, pi 3 for the full-scale aircraft equal to pi 3 for the model, etc., all the way up to however many pi parameters you have. And if you manage to scale the model and set up the conditions so that pi 2, pi 3 up to pi k are the same for the model and the prototype, then it follows that the pi 1s are the same. So pi 1 for the prototype and pi 1 for the model are exactly the same. 
if you manage to satisfy these conditions. This here is called the prediction equation. And the reason it's called the prediction equation is because once you satisfy the conditions of similarity, this is the equation that contains the relationship between the uh, variable that you're interested in. It contains the relationship between the model and the full-scale prototype. So the model conditions must correspond to the same pi terms as the prototype. So for example, this uh, small scale aircraft here that I'm showing in the in the picture, you'd run this aircraft at the same Reynolds number as the full scale aircraft. If it was a boat being towed in a water tank, so a small scale boat, you'd tow it at the same Froude number as the full scale boat. And if it was a high speed aerodynamics problem, maybe launching a rocket, you'd run the wind tunnel at the same Mach number as you would expect for the full-scale rock. So that's how it works. And if you manage to do that, then the pi ones will be the same and you can use that. You can set pi one of the model equal to pi one for the full-scale prototype. Now it's important to realize that the pi terms, and we saw this in a previous example, included geometric uh, effects as well, such as aspect ratios. So in order to satisfy all the pi terms, uh, you have to have complete geometric similarity between the model and the prototype. So in other words, it has to be a perfectly scaled model, including all the fine details. For example, this aircraft here, these little, these little wing, winglets that are used to reduce the drag effects of wingtip vortices would have to be exact scaled geometric similarity should also extend to surface roughness. So for example, if the height of the surface roughness on the prototype, the full-scale wing is say one hundredth or one thousandth of the span, it must be that same ratio on the model wing as well. So you want to get the same what's called relative roughness. And the reason for that is because, well in part because the surface roughness influences the development of turbulence. So we'll end with an example. Imagine it's desired to predict the drag force on a billboard sign, and the full-scale prototype billboard has dimensions of 2 meters by 1.3 meters. And what's done is, instead of testing a scaled model in a wind tunnel, uh, the testing is done in a water tunnel. What I've shown here over on the right is a, a water tunnel uh, at the University of Massachusetts. This is quite common to use a water tunnel instead of a wind tunnel and you'll see why there are advantages just to using a water tunnel later in this video. So a 20th scale model of a billboard is tested in a water tunnel at 20 degrees C and using a load cell the drag force on the model is measured to be 1.3 kilonewtons at a water speed of 15 meters per second. Then the question is, at 20 degrees C and 100 kPa, what's the corresponding wind speed for similarity for the prototype, and what's the predicted drag force on the prototype in air at that wind speed? This problem harks back to a previous video. We considered this same problem in the video for Chapter 5, Part 2. We showed that the drag force on a rectangular plate was a function of the width of the plate, the height of the plate, the free stream velocity, and the fluid properties, the dynamic viscosity, and the density. And then using dimensional analysis, we showed that this problem reduced down to three dimensionless pi parameters, so pi 1, pi 2, and pi 3. And we showed that the dimensionless drag force, so this is the drag force divided by uh, sort of a stagnation pressure times an area, so this is force over force, dimensionless drag force, is a function of the aspect ratio of the plate, height to width ratio, and it's a function of the Reynolds number. So the drag force depends only on the geometry and on the Reynolds number. And this same relationship applies to the scaled model. So we can write down pi 1 is some function of pi 2 and pi 3, exactly the same equation here, 
but we include subscripts M here for the model. And the point is, and the really important assumption here, and it, it's a very valid assumption, is that the function here is exactly the same. So the non-subscripted variables refer to the full-scale prototype, and the variables with a subscript M refer to the model. So similarity requires that the pi parameters on, well, both sides are going to be, both sides of the equation are going to be equal. But let's just consider the pi parameters on the right-hand side of the equation for now. So similarity requires that we operate the model with pi 2 of the prototype equal to pi 2 of the model and pi 3 of the prototype equal to pi 3 of the model. So we have to have the same aspect ratio, the same ratio of the height to the width, and we have to have the same Reynolds number in order to have similarity. Now we're told in the problem that the model is built to a perfect 20 to 1 scale, so we're satisfying the pi 2 parameter. We're satisfying that the pi 2 parameter will be the same for the model and the prototype. So we have that h over the height of the model is 20, and the width of the prototype over the width of the model is 20. We can use the pi 3 parameter here to find the velocity of the air over the prototype to have the same Reynolds number. So what we've done here is we've solved this equation for v here. So that this, this equation is just the solution of the pi 3 equals pi 3m for v, and this relates the velocity of the air for the prototype over the velocity of water uh, for the model. Now to get the drag force on the prototype, we use the prediction equation. So we use the pi 1 parameter that contains the, the thing we're looking for, which is the drag force. So we set the dimensionless drag force on the model equal to the dimensionless drag force on the prototype. And that's what we've got written here. We've got the dimensionless drag force for the model, dimensionless drag force for the prototype, and then we solve this relationship for the drag on the prototype, which is what we're after. And that gives you the drag on the prototype in terms of the drag that's measured on the model. So in the next slide, I've just rewritten some of these things that we've shown. So we've shown, of course, that the uh, the, the scale is, we're told in the problem, the scale is 20 to 1. This is the relationship between the velocity on the prototype and the model. This is the relationship on the, uh, the drag force on the, uh, the prototype and the model. Now we can start substituting values. From the problem statement, we know that the force on the model, so in the water, was 1.3 kilonewtons, tested at a water speed of 50 meters per second. So we have, we have this, and we have the, uh, the, the model water velocity. Model tests were performed in water at 20 degrees C, so we can get the properties of water from the tables at 20 degrees C. There's the kinematic, sorry, dynamic viscosity. There's the density. The prototype will operate in air at 20 degrees C and 100 kPa, so these are the properties for air. There's the dynamic viscosity and the density of air using the ideal gas law. I could have just taken it from the table as well. And so now we can make the substitution here to find the velocity using this equation, we can find the velocity of air that corresponds to the same Reynolds number uh, for the velocity of water. Coming down here now, we have the dynamic viscosity of the prototype, so that's the dynamic viscosity of air, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 over the dynamic viscosity of water, and then the density of water over the density of air, that's correct, and then the length scale, the prototype is 20 times uh, wider than the, the model, so we have 1 over 20 here, and the model was tested in water at 15 meters per second. When we multiply this out, we get that the airspeed for a model that's 20 times larger needs to be 11.3 meters per second in order to have the same Reynolds number, so that you have similar conditions, so you can apply the prediction equation. So now, at 11 meters per second, we'll be able to figure out, using the prediction equation, we can figure out the drag force on the prototype.
and I've rewritten the equation here that we had from equating the uh, pi 1 parameters. And so we have the length scale. This is going to be 20 over 1, yep, squared. The density, this is for the prototype, so that's for air. And the model was in water, so that's correct. And then we have the velocity in air we just showed was uh, 11.3 meters per second. And the test was done in water at 50 meters per second squared. And then the load cell measured that the force on the model in the water was 1.3 kilonewtons. And when we multiply this out, this is the force that's on the full scale billboard at a wind speed of 11.3 meters per second. So we get 0.35 kilonewtons. And that's, that's the answer to the problem. A couple of comments. One is that water has a kinematic viscosity where kinematic viscosity is, you may recall from chapter one, is the dynamic viscosity divided by the density. The kinematic viscosity of water is about 15 times lower than air. Water uh, has very low viscosity, and so it can be used to achieve or simulate relatively high Reynolds numbers, even when you have a small scale model. Imagine if instead of using a water tunnel, you've done this test in a wind tunnel. So you have a, a model that's 20 times uh, smaller and you're operating in the same fluids. So you've got the same fluid for the prototype and the same fluid for the, for the model. So the, if the kinematic viscosity is the same, then it, this reduces to the requirement that the velocity times the width of the model equals the velocity times the width of the prototype. So if you think about this for a moment, what this means is that to get the same Reynolds number with a model that's 20 times smaller, you're going to need 20 times more wind speed. And 20 times 15 is 300 meters per second, which is impractically large. At that, that's approaching the uh, speed of sound. Uh, in air, and so you'd have compressibility effects. So it's impractical to achieve the same Reynolds number with such a small model in a wind tunnel. And so you can see the advantages that uh, water tunnels have over air tunnels. And that completes this video.